So, listen to this. Ronaldo Fenomeno might be the scariest player you could ever face, but everyone acts like his career ended in 2006, when, even way past that point, it wasn't any different. Even when he looked like a retired player, like a dad on vacation, fat and old, playing with a knee that had been opened up and messed with eight different times, he was still Ronaldo. The way he moved, it shouldn't have been possible. At times he seemed more agile and faster than the 20-year-olds around him, and even if he wasn't, it didn't matter because what made Ronaldo scary weren't really his dribbles or his finishing, it was the fact that he was cold as ice. One of the smartest, most composed players to ever step on his planet, it felt like he saw everything in slow motion. He could have weighed 200 kilos and he'd still find a way to make you look dumb, and everyone knew that. Every defender that faced him was pissing their pants with his highlight reel flashing through their heads. You just don't act right when a monster stares you in the eyes. That's why, in my opinion, his time at Corinthians was one of the most impressive stunts he ever pulled off. He proved the age-old saying that form is temporary, class is permanent. He made it clear that under those layers of fat tissue, the greatest predator this world had seen lay dormant, eager for one final hunt, and once the entire world rejected him, put him down, humiliated him, he showed him one final time that he was still the best. You see, people seem to have forgotten how harshly Ronaldo was treated because of his weight. By the time he left Real, everyone in Spain referred to him as El Cordo, and at AC Milan, he didn't get much better. Even Ancelotti doubted him, as he said it himself, when Ronaldo arrived, he was over 100 kilos. I told him he couldn't play like that, so he told me, what do you want me to do, score or run? The next game, he didn't run, but he did score two goals. And I mean, if you look at that season's stats, they were kind of absurd. He averaged one goal contribution every 81 minutes in his first three months at the club, but then it was one injury after the other and almost exactly one year after his arrival, he was already leaving. After all, by then he had already been out for over 100 days with a broken leg, and then his knee went out again. And it wasn't like Milan needed them, they had back to in Zaghi and Gilardino, even Aubameyang was still hanging around, so they just terminated his contract. By the time he had recovered from the surgery, he was already 32 years old, it had been 3 years since he had last been called up for Brazil, and it had been over a year since he had stepped on the pitch. To everyone's eyes, it was over. Ronaldo had retired, no one expected him to make a comeback, but then he was spotted training with his childhood club Flamengo when the fans couldn't believe their eyes. 15 years later, Later, Ronaldo was back in Brazil and he was right there on their training grounds. Surely there was no chance Fleming would let him escape. But then they got worried that he would never fully recover, so they delayed any negotiations more and more and more. He started getting upset and one day, Corinthians scolded and he said yes, breaking the hearts of every Flamenguista. They couldn't believe he had used their infrastructures for months, only to end up signing for one of their rivals. It was treason. But that wasn't even the strangest part, because how the hell did Corinthians even manage to sign him? The moment the story hit the news, even their own president said it was impossible. In fact, later he would claim that the moment someone suggested the idea to him, his reaction was to yell at them saying, we can't even pay the water bill and you're telling me to sign Ronaldo? <laughs> Not only had Corinthians just gotten promoted back to the top flight, but they were completely broke at the time. Apparently, because they were in business with the Russian Mafia. You see, four years earlier, one of their fans, a guy named Renato Dupra, presented the board with the opportunity to sign a millionaire contract with his company called MSI. And they just took it. And sure, they signed Tevez and Mascherano when one year later they had won the league. But maybe, just maybe, they should have thought about it twice considering that Dupra was already known for sending a massive company into bankruptcy and when it comes to MSI, well, no one really understood where all the money came from. One year later, it happened. MSI started being investigated by the police, their whole partnership succumbed, the money slowly disappeared and the charges began piling up. Money laundering, tax evasion, racketeering. And one day, they just left the country, leaving all of their debt behind for Corinthians to take care of. To which, their presence reacted by pretty much resigning and leaving them as well, all the way down in the second tier. Oh, 
And when it comes to the origin of the money, Boris Berovsky. The whole operation was just a way to launder dirty money for this Russian let's call him a businessman with ties to the mafia that was now pretty much exiled in the UK. It's no wonder their new president Andres Sanchez didn't think signing Ronaldo was possible either, but regardless, after a bit of convincing he decided to take a shot in the dark and it worked. <laughs> One day, after sitting down in a hotel for hours discussing all of the demands Ronaldo's agent had made, with things looking worse and worse, he got up to go smoke a cigarette in the bathroom, asked Ronaldo to join him, and once they were alone one-on-one, -on -one, Ronaldo asked him, what do you want to do? And he told him, I want to go back home, but the amount of money you're asking is madness. You're asking for all the sponsorships and deals. We just got out of the second tier, we don't have all that. And Ronaldo told him, don't worry. We don't even need to decide on a salary. I just want to play. And that was it. Even if the agent got a bit upset, it didn't matter. Only a few days later, the signing was announced and the fans went berserk. Looking at his presentation, you would think the greatest of all time had arrived. Maybe because he had. And his dream was simple, to get 30 goals, get called back up to the national team, to win the Libertadores and in the end, who knows, maybe take a shot at the Club World Cup. However, let's just say, everyone else seemed to think this was overly optimistic because according to the press, Ronaldo weighed 97 kilos at the time, which ironically was actually optimistic in itself since Corinthians would confirm years later that he was actually at 115. Regardless, the club was also far from recovering from everything that had happened. The locker room at their training grounds was literally a shipping container. The players would often complain that they would have to stand naked looking at the shower head waiting for the hot water to come. Ronaldo himself admitted that when he saw all that, he called the president and told him, Man, where have you brought me? It rains more inside of the locker room than outside of it. Yeah, life wasn't easy at the club, but having Ronaldo there motivated the players like never before. If you hear the stories of how they reacted to his signing, it is always complete disbelief. As Douglas said, when they told me they had signed Ronaldo, I was like, What Ronaldo? Then I was like, the Ronaldo? <laughs> when he came into the locker room, we all sat like little schoolboys. The hell was I supposed to say? You're welcome. <laughs> Regardless, for two months Ronaldo stayed away from the stadiums, only training with the goal of getting back up to speed, but still, every news outlet found a way of posting embarrassing videos of him being left behind as the team ran around the pitch, leading the rival fans to make a mockery out of his signing. Or at least they did, until he debuted. The man was supposed to be slowly easing his way back onto the pitch, but he quickly began looking more dangerous than anyone could imagine, and after only 50 minutes of game time, he scored his first goal. And as he ran towards the fans to celebrate, they went so wild, the fans collapsed. However, Ronaldo wasn't as impressed as everyone else. As he said, after the game I had the president and everyone coming up to me all euphoric. I said, what are you celebrating for? We haven't won anything, there's still a lot to do. And then, he did it. It changed Corinthians forever. It was 8 goals in his first 10 matches, with that first goal he tied the match. The game after he scored the winner. Two weeks later he scored twice in a 2 goal draw, but only then did things get serious. It was time for the Paulista Championship semi-finals. However, things didn't go well at first. Not only was he wasteful, but he put in a tackle that could have easily gotten him a red card, but thank god the referee settled for the yellow, because the world needed to see that second leg performance. After this match, the vice president of Sao Paulo had the bright idea of repeatedly referring to Ronaldo as an ex-football player, which, let's just say, it might have angered them a little bit, considering that in the second leg, he created a chance for the first goal and scored the second, knocking out Sao Paulo and then making sure to head straight to the post-match interview and leave the message. There's someone talking shit, some idiot. I want to see if that guy will come out of his cave talking funny now. And let's just say, Ronaldo didn't stop there. Then came the final versus Santos, Neymar Santos. 10 minutes in, Corinthians was already in front, but Santos was on top of them, getting closer and closer. 
which was exactly when Ronaldo scored to make it too. But it only made things worse. It got so bad that Corinthians left Ronaldo alone up front and with 30 minutes left, their defensive wall broke apart and Santos finally scored. And at that point, that 2-1 meant nothing. Corinthians looked like a team about to crumble, which, again, was precisely when Ronaldo, with Pele watching from above, showed up with simply one of the most stunning goals ever scored, proving that he too was a king and taking the title after six years. With one tournament, he had already proven to the world that he was still capable of stopping the hearts of rival fans, and the world noticed. The Gazeta de los Sport literally said that Ronaldo became a phenomenon again. But nothing proved that there had been a gigantic shift in public opinion like the huge campaign that was started to get Phenomeno back in the national team for the 2010 World Cup. Even Romario came out saying that he still is and will forever be one of the greatest in the world because he is a natural born goal scorer. Unfortunately, the national team coach didn't seem too convinced. However, that didn't mean Ronaldo stopped going at it because the last 16 round of the Copa Brazil was just two weeks away and whoever won that tournament would get a golden ticket to the Copa Libertadores. So once they lost the first leg, Ronaldo made sure to score twice in the second to pull off the comeback and I mean, just look at how he pulled off that penalty for that second goal. Unbelievable. Still, none of that compared to what would happen one month later when he reached the final and Ronaldo truly turned back the clock, going on an incredible run, pulling it back and smacking it by the near post, scoring the goal that would earn them the title of Brazilian champions only eight months after they had played their last second division match. And above all, getting them to the Libertadores, meaning that for the rest of the season the only objective left on the table was scoring those 30 goals and if he was already on 11 for the year, then in the very next match he jump-started his championship campaign with a hat-trick against Fluminense and it was not just any hat-trick. I mean, watch this. First, he opened the scoreboard with a classic striker's goal, then he started a play that led to the second goal of the match, and for his own second goal, he again went on a run, pulled it back and sat down two defenders before sending it into the near post. It was absurd but still not his best. He saved that one for the 86th minute when Fluminense was threatening to tie the match, just blasting a volley from outside the box. Three matches later, he had already scored another three, taking his tally up to 17 goals, while we were still four months away from the end of the season. But unfortunately, one week later, he fractured his right hand and was left out for two of those four months, and even though he would still be pulling off crazy goals once he made it back, he would finish the season with only 23. Regardless, you know what they say, new year, new life, and with Corinthians getting money left and right from sponsors and either Ronaldo wearing them on his shirt, Roberto Carlos coming to join the team soon in a new stadium in construction, all while celebrating their 100th anniversary, it had everything to go right. And when Ronaldo started off his season by dribbling the keeper to score his first goal, everyone's hopes hit all-time highs. But then... Ronaldo went down again with a calf injury, and though that wouldn't be enough to knock him down, then the injuries just kept coming and as much as he tried his hardest to persevere, doing his best to make sure that Corinthians would at least stay afloat at the Libertadores, somehow still managing to score the winners both home and away against Cerro Portaño, then they faced Flamengo and though he would score to put them in front, they weren't able to hold on to the lead and ended up going out on away goals. Just like that, the fabled Libertadores project was dead. And to make it all worse, then the national team coach confirmed that Ronaldo would not be at the World Cup. Those months crushed him, the injuries worsened and the medical staff decided to pull him from the team before it all crashed and burned. From May to October, he made only two appearances. It would have been incredibly easy to just call it a day and hang up the boots at that point, but thankfully for him, in his absence, his teammates had managed to keep the team on top and against all odds, with few matches left in the season, they were still fighting for a spot in the next year's Libertadores, so Ronaldo came back and was extremely the decisive once again, getting four goals and an assist in the final six matches of the season, securing two draws and a win against Cruzeiro, quickly getting them an extra five points and locking that third place finish for good. Suddenly, he had another reason to keep going. 
With his third year starting, the rainy days were over and though Ronaldo himself admitted that even getting to preseason is a huge challenge for me, he was even seen racing his teammates in training, he seemed more fit than we had seen him in a while, but against all odds, only 4 matches into the season. Corinthians was knocked out of the Libertadores in a gigantic upset against Deportivo Tolima and on Valentine's Day, to everyone's surprise, Ronaldo called up for a press conference and publicly apologized for their failure at the Libertadores. You could see how much it meant to him, he was literally choking back tears and then came the worst part. Four years ago in Milan, I found out I was suffering from a disease called hypothyroidism. It slowed down my metabolism, the only way to combat it was a medication that is considered doping if you're a football player, so I chose not to take it. A lot of people should feel bad about the things they said about my weight. In recent days, I've cried like a baby. I finally lost the fight against my own body. The ones who are close to me know the truth. I can't even walk up the stairs without feeling pain. I gave my life to football, I sacrificed everything, I have no regrets. But now, I must go. As he left, even though across those three years he had only managed to give the club a few good months, the present hailed him as the biggest idol the club ever had. Four months later, he played his ceremonial match and even after several injections, he could only stay on the pitch for 15 minutes.